Sports Show, episode number 471. My name is John Morgan. Cold Coffee is with me here at the gorgeous compound, the Casa de Cold <laughs> Coffee. <laughs> In my favorite month of the year in Las Vegas in April, it's like 70 degrees outside. and It's and, so nice out. And here we are, cold coffee, like like two ships passing in the night, just <laughs> getting together. You know what I mean? Like normally you would say, well, what do you mean? Didn't you guys work together all day? Didn't I just see you day? all day? Didn't you just work together we all day? We were supposed to see you all day. We were supposed to. I, I felt terrible. I was a, another <laughs> another. You? Did you really? Late scratch <laughs> to the UFC media day today. I felt bad. Um, but I did get an opportunity to jump in and, and uh, co-host UFC Unfiltered with Jim Norton. Matt Serra was traveling. I think uh, Jim said he had just done the uh, the Matt Serra. I mean, the Matt Serra. Matt Serra had just done the Joe Rogan podcast, actually. And so I guess he was traveling back from doing Joe oh. Rogan. So he was unavailable. And so they gave me the opportunity to co-host again, which means I guess I'm not uh, screwing it up too bad in the opportunities that they gave me to, yeah. to be there. So... Uh, I'll always Does that enjoy. mean you're going to be uh, – doesn't Sarah still do looking for a fight? Are you going to be filling in some looking for the fight in the future seasons? I mean, just, you never know where I so might pop So you'll hop up. on like the bull that – you know, you'll hop on the oh, Twisted Steel or no. do some of that other bullshit? There's no way. I would not do that. If Dana – if they asked you to come for one of those, you wouldn't do any of that. Dana would force – Dana no. would literally throw stupid if, amounts of money if for, so, if for some reason I ended up on there – not that that's anywhere happening, but for some reason – that what <laughs> <We're laughs> reason that would happen. Um, no, I would do a lot of stuff, but jumping on a bull, I don't know if I could do that, dude. Who did any, that's of, one them, of, the did any of them did it? Or was that – did Sarah do it? Did they? I don't remember. Now I have to go back and watch I, it. I don't feel like I know Dana, Dana did. said he didn't. I feel like Dana didn't. Dana and didn't, I, but that – I don't think didn't. I want to think that – I thought one of them maybe did. I can't remember now. And if it would have been one, it would have been Sarah. Maybe they did Sarah would – he's just not scared. He'd do it. He doesn't it. give a fuck. That he's, would, he's I'll be honest with you. Out of all the things they did, they've they done – That'd be fucking that's terrifying. That's one that was like – Yeah, I that was like, I don't know if I could do that. Terrifying. Because, bro, if I would, I would wrong, sit on it. Like, say if they just – like, they didn't open up the gate, would you sit on the bull right there? And they're like, we're not going to open up the gate. You know when the guys load yeah, in yeah, before yeah. they go, would you sit right there? No. That, to me, <laughs> looks like some of the scariest part. Because their legs are, like, penned Dude, up so right I, there. Because, you know, look, I've, been, I've gone to a couple of the PBR events here. Not that I know anything about it, but yeah. just looking for stuff to do and, and different yeah. things. And I, and I honestly – I mean, I, when you're not doing staycations, you know, and oh, all the other stuff. You know, not. if I'm not chilling at Resorts World <laughs> like I was doing this past weekend, which is very cool. By the way, I just saw they're hosting a bunch of UFC 300 stuff. I'm telling you right now, I've never <laughs> been to Resorts World. I stayed there on Sunday. Uh, it's it's a cool spot, man. If you yeah. ever, if it's, I'll be honest with you. You know where I stayed on Sunday? Where's that? Here, right here at the couch. You didn't have a staycation <laughs> with the family. Now, look, I it's have a staycation to, here at the staycation. I have home. to take care of the family. You know what I mean? But I, 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 here's what I've determined about Resorts World. I think that's an awful name. I think just there's nothing about it that yeah. just sounds like well, I need to go there. It and remember, like a, it wasn't supposed to be Resorts World. It was it was a different whole different complex, and then right. they sold it to was it the Hilton people or something that right. made it the Resorts World because it was like a combination. It was almost like an afterthought. They're like, oh shit, okay, we bought this, we and it's supposed it to be a combination of things. It's a terrible something. name, but it's yeah, a cool it's not place. very catchy. It's a cool it's place though. So great restaurants, uh, great pool area, great. Uh, so I enjoyed it. If you ever see the UFC 300 stuff, I would recommend going there. Now, back to the bull riding. You, you had that to say that is, for the staycation, didn't you? You got a staycation di- discount to, to, to no, 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 that, didn't no, you? no, no. I did, this I, is not an ad. You but know hey, what? Just letting you guys. I know. should point that out. I did not. Uh, yeah, th- this is not <laughs> any kind of working relationship. I just was like, but it could be resorts. But world it could be resorts world to- if you need. <laughs> you know what? Now that you mention, it's not that bad of a name. No, it's pretty good name. You know what I was thinking? <laughs> you know, I was thinking. I thought of many other names, but resorts world works for Ultimately, me. Ultimately, <laughs> yeah, it's growing on me. Once once they started paying for me, I realized, you know what? It's that's a hell of a name. But no. It was. This was just John Morgan going on the website like anybody else, and uh, it, it was just cheap for whatever. Since it was Easter Sunday, I guess the rates were like really low. So I was like, "Oh, that's cool. I actually got a suite. That's crazy. Yeah, I got a suite, man. For it wasn't like like. I mean, I can see where some would say, "Well, that's a sign of the Vegas Times, you know." But it, it'd be one thing if they guaranteed because some places do give off the Easter Monday thing. Yep. Like if there were, I think if there was a guaranteed that Monday would be a non-working, I think that weekend would probably be busier in Vegas. Probably right. So it's not. outside of that, it's just a Sunday in Vegas, yeah. you know. So I didn't even know Monday was a holiday for a I lot of people. I didn't either. If it wasn't for Google uh, Calendar, sometimes putting like stuff, that, I was like, I was like Easter Monday. I was like, is Easter on a Monday? I was like, that doesn't make any sense, you know. Uh, what and was then, what was the holiday? It's a uh, it's on Sunday, Easter Sunday, but right. it's a combination. It's so they uh, just give Monday off because of Easter. How do they do it's, that? It, it's a religious. It's thing. part of the it's part of the rising, um, the the waking. So he rose from the death. And no, then, like, I know the, what um, Easter is. No, but that's but what the how combination. Do they make that a federal holiday. 
holiday. You can't make a religious holiday. It's not a federal holiday. holiday. Oh, it's just some some people just give it off. And I think maybe the post I think it's on their own choosing, but it's not a, like a federal uh-huh. holiday. But how they, you know, like better religious people than me. <laughs> my insides started burning when I was trying oh, to man, fake was that about answer. To explain <laughs> I was Easter like, to let me. me. I love- <laughs> What's this? this? <laughs> Noah and an ark? What is that about? Tell well, me. you know, there's a guy. He was going to get three of everything, but he got lazy. So he was like, I'm just going to go for two. When in fact, great. he was fighting with this woman. He's like, I want to get enough. She's like, honey, we only got room for two. <laughs> two. He's like, two of what? She said, two of everything. Fine. It was always the woman that was, was yeah, like, yeah. So it was a fair rate. And so we she, stayed there. She let him keep the ark called after Noah. But really... <laughs> Really, it was Jane. It was Jane's <laughs> boat. It was what they just came from. It's so ridiculous. Okay. I learned that in Bible school, by so the way. So back to the bull. There is no way yeah, I would speaking of bull. I not. <laughs> we're not even drinking this day. Uh, that's true. This is just, I think we're both just a little bit tired and delirious. I'm in the I was middle. literally falling asleep on the on the couch waiting for you to get here. Like, so, well, It doesn't help. I had the, the, the back doors open, so with that breeze oh, and this weather so right that now, nice cool air I literally like – uh, you know something about just as weather. I, when I'm done with the work day, I'm like I I I, I like my daytime naps. I'll yeah. take a little nappy nap every once nappy in a while. Nap? Yeah, I'm telling you. And if you didn't come in, like it's you startled the fuck out of me when you walked in. I was like, Ugh. the staff didn't alert you. No, <laughs> to, to no. they didn't see me driving up the winding <laughs> road. To, they to didn't. They that. didn't buzz me and say, Mr. Hathaway. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Morgan is coming up the yard. <laughs> I think it's awesome that you brought in all British staff, by the way. It's well, amazing. just the guy that works with security. The other guy was the, – yeah, the Irish guy was off today, I think. <laughs> all right, so back to the Bulls. I would not ride the Bulls because I, I've seen – that literally looks like the most scary part. Like, so, like, I mean, the whole bull riding experience is crazy, but at least when you're out in the open, like if you get bucked – you can like you jump fly, off or you yeah. fly, yeah. But man, you see them sometimes. But like, they don't really buck on. too often, like in that little pen thing. Oh, I've seen them a couple times yeah. over. They like slam them up against the wall. Yeah, like, that's scary. That's what I would. I would think like if your legs, because once you drop your legs in, like yeah, and they pin you on the side. Up then you just it. like. But then you see like all those, and it's funny because you see all those the, all the all the cowboys on the side trying to move it around. And it's like. You're only moving because the bull wants to move. Yeah, like you might try to push him. Like, come on, let's get him, let's center him up. And like, bro, if he doesn't want to move, he's not going to move. They're such amazing. amazing those are fun, man. I'm telling you, those those PBR events. If if a PBR event is ever in your town, because the tickets aren't really that expensive. Yeah, and they're fun. Like they like I don't know anything about bull riding, but like yeah. the action is there, and like they they keep it moving the whole time. They're like playing music and you know doing different. You know they got like a guy hosting basically that's yeah. talking to keep the whole thing. I always I, I've had fun. Every time I've gone out there, to be honest with you. Yep. And I, I was going to, as a suggestion for those that can't go to the real PBR, what you can do is say if you're at home with your woman, you drink a bunch of PBR and then you, you take it from behind. <laughs> And, and you, you sir, co- and, sir. and and you call her the wrong name and see how long you could hold <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> they call that <laughs> they call that poor man's PBR convention. <laughs> we have reached an all-time low or high, one or the other. I'm not uh, sure. I'm breaking down mixed I don't martial have, arts. Yeah, I don't, adv- I don't only- advise anybody actually do that with their significant other. But it's a funny joke. It is a funny, joke. A funny joke. All right, so. Uh, yeah, so we didn't work together today because I hosted USM Filter. By the way, I did get a chance to uh, help interview uh, Alex Morono and uh, Dan Argetta from the card. So uh, if you get a chance to check out UFC Unfiltered, uh, do so. If you're if you're a regular listener, hopefully you uh, enjoy it, even without Matt Sarah being there. If you're not a regular listener and you just want to check it out and give it a shot and tell them how great you thought John Morgan was <laughs> I on knew there. You were going to say that. Feel free. <laughs> Feel free to let them know. Like, know I love they, they want to just go. Get rid of that Sarah oh, guy. Oh no, no, don't get rid of him. He's a legend. I mean, but you know, if you want, if you want some more John Morgan in there, you want to say what's that? What's the phrase? Que sera, sera. <laughs> see, wow. see you later, sera. Que sera, Matt Sarah. No, you don't get rid of Matt Sarah. <laughs> That's the terror. You don't get rid of Matt Sarah. He'd, He'd fight you for it. Yes, he would, and I would not do well in that. <laughs> he would, he would handle me in quick fashion. So I'm not looking to do that. Uh, uh, so yes, yeah, so I did that, and I missed the media day. But we'll talk about the things that. I'm surprised I did that watch- Morono actually got to media day. Like they skipped over some of them. They brought him and um, who, who's he fighting? Alex is fighting. Um, let me pull up the card. Oh, he's because he's the featured prelim. He is. Yeah, I was surprised he said, but he's fighting Court McGee. Court McGee. Yeah. I was like, why are we having these guys? Because they didn't even bring all the the. I don't know if it was like a translation, but 
uh, Christos Giagos wasn't there. Uh, Bahumondes wasn't there. Um, Walter Walker, and Lucas Breschke, Trevor Peak, Charlie Campbell. Those are all main card fighters. Yeah, that they and none of them there. were there. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just because, again, sometimes I think the bout order gets changed after, like, after the PR. You Ooh, know what I mean? So you're thinking these guys are going to make it to the main? No, I think maybe that when they were putting the PR schedule together. Because they try to get the PR schedule to the fighters the week before. Yeah. And I think maybe there was a late shuffle and, and McGee and Morona were further up the maybe. card. Maybe. And, I mean, they all th- – Obviously, have good stories. I mean, they know what they're going to get That's when they the come to media Those days. are veterans, I mean, like, man. It's, it was pretty legit. And Court, Court was really, really good today. Actually, they were, they were both really good. But Court, man, like, it's funny. We were talking about, it, like, Court from when I first met Court when I was, like, UFC, the way he carried himself. And he was much more, like, at the time, just not standoffish, just more like, hey, look at me. I'm in yeah. the UFC, uh, blah, 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 where you see the guy now, and he's just much more humbled, mature, yeah. like, life he's so much more life has happened to him at this point you know and it's just i love listening to him chat about stuff and it's oh, funny he's like great, man. you know at some point you know i i could definitely tell that uh, there cuz me i wanted to dive into more stuff and chat with him we were talking about his neck surgery and his recovery and then obviously I gave him a chance to talk about his court mcgee foundation and i can tell it was at that point i know people in the room were like come on this went really long but i was like bro this is court, court McGee, i was like he's, chatting, he's been around you know, he's forever. been around for a long time you know like you know, this is one of the guys. He did say that he re up. This he he signed a four four fight contract. This is the first of the four fights, but you know, this is another guy that, and he even said it. You know, there's no guarantee that all four of those fights ever get fought out. He's 39. He'll be 40, 41 by the time he right. finishes these these fight contracts, if he's able to go. And you know, I kind of brought it up to him. I was like, you know, this. Could this be the end of this these, this last run of things? You know, he was talking about, remember, he had his wrist surgery, and there was a time where he thought that was going to end his yep. career. The neck surgery, even going in that surgery that, you know, like that's such a scary surgery that, you know, you almost wonder like, okay, is it just a quality of life? Let me fix it. If it's a quality of life and it's not going to affect things, but will I still be able to fight? Or yeah. is it the kind of thing that I do just to help my career go forward? You know, like these are all big questions. I mean, when somebody starts cutting into your neck and your spinal column and all the other kind of shit, like it's very, 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 know. very serious. You never really know. So, but I just thought it was great to be able to chat with them. But I know there was a couple of times I was thinking, like, fuck, this went really long. Yeah, but, but I was like, it's court. Dude, like, you, you know, they only have so many more times that you're yes. going to see them. You know what I mean? And these are important fights. You know, some of these veterans, man, I think one thing that maybe some people don't realize is UFC contracts never go down in value, right? So when they re sign, like, the way it works, I know everybody talks about the way it starts when you come yeah. in. Like, oh, 10 and 10, it's atrocious. I can't believe, you know, I have athletes doing this. But they never go down. So well, the way the contracts are structured is that if you win, you get an escalator, right? So your next one, you know, so if you if you come in at 10 and 10 and you lose, then your next fight, you're still at 10 and 10. But if you win, you know, depending on how your contract may be set up, it's 12 and 12 or 13 and 13, right? And, and every your contract is set up that way. So when these guys re-up, it always goes up. So those escalators just continue to escalate. It's never like they sign a new contract and the value goes down from the previous right. value. So the longer you can stay in the organization and the longer that you can kind of move forward, the more money you can make. You know right. what I mean? And so right now, Court McGee is making more money than he ever has at any point in his entire career. So sometimes I, I, I think, I don't know, maybe like people get Let's tired of 2010. seeing 2010. Yeah, so you think about how many you know little escalations he's had along the yep. way. He's making good money now. Yeah, you back know when I mean? the Ultimate Fighters were exhibitions. Crazy. So man. crazy when I'm looking at Topology and you see exhibition MMA, exhibition MMA, exhibition MMA. When did they finally change that? Well, they still count the first fights as exhibition. It's so only that, the ones on the fight night? It's only the ones on the fight night, yeah. So that yeah. way, and the only reason they do it is so that, uh, well, first of all, because they do two-round fights, and second, because, oh, that makes um, sense. And second because um, that way they can keep the result of them Private. private yeah so interesting so that's why they do that but you know so for guys like this that can stick around that's why you're happy for those guys that can stick around you know what i mean yeah and it is funny a, a number of veterans i think like in the beginning don't really love talking to the media but then yeah. in the end i think they start to realize like hey man this is all going away real quick and you know what yeah my phone's not going to ring and there's not going to be people that want to talk to me and put cameras in front of my yeah. face and all that so let me let me soak it in and embrace it yeah. while i can you know and i can get it i mean i get it i mean like you know Plus, you know, you go out there and you you never know what's going to get thrown at you. You never know if somebody's going to be out there trying to just put up every bad thing in, in your life. So you probably go in a little bit guarded. And I think probably, you know, I think a lot of people when they come to Apex, regardless of what people think when they lessen a lot of things, 
people come in and they realize like, oh, okay, they scale, they look at the, the, the scene, they realize, okay, it doesn't, I recognize this guy, I recognize her, I recognize this guy, I recognize this guy, you know, and then they realize that, okay, maybe I could chat and maybe yeah, I can I open a up a little there. bit more, you know. So there is something to that, and I'm sure maybe the interviews aren't the, you know, something, you know, the top CNN news, you know, or whatever, or, you know, the hardest hitting stuff, but we're able to get some pretty good stuff a lot of times because fighters open up, you know, and I enjoy it because like you said, you know, like there could be a day in the future where who knows if, if, if I'm not at an event and say court fights for the next three times elsewhere, I might never, ever actually yeah. interview him again. Yep. So I might as well take opportunity, you know, to have a, a chat with a guy that I actually respect his story, man. I love what he's trying to get back. And especially a guy that when it was so crazy, you know, as a, you know, when he starts talking about the spinal surgery and I was like, and I was hearing the way that how he recovered from his neck surgery since he had that whole bout of wanting to get off drugs and not want to do it. So it was a really big point in him to how the pain management, right. even from when the surgery was happening until afterwards, he didn't want any narcotics. He didn't want to leave the hospital with any narcotics. So you're talking that's hardcore, bro. Ibuprofen, aspirin, other shit. He said he was up like every three months. To think when I went through mine, if I had to just only have like, say, regular ibuprofen or whatever. There's no way. There's no way, dude. I was in so much hurting, pain. Dude. You were hurting bad. Like, it's nuts to hear. So when he was telling me that, I was like, dude, you're fucking crazy. I was like, so what happened on the surgery? I was like, did you tell him? So they, he, they said they could give him an intravenous enough. He said he wanted to be sedated so they could stay asleep, but he didn't want to have like, crazy amounts of narcotics in it but the guy said if i start to see you up it's okay intravenous to put something in to make sure that you don't wake up you don't want somebody waking up when in you're middle especially when they're oh. going they were going through like his front into like the like the front area and then to get to his in like the the spinal column through his neck and from the front and i'm just like you're fucking psycho dude to like not want to do it but that's his when you understand his story and everything he's preaching to get off the drugs and people, how people are yeah, recovering. Man. That was so huge hearing him talk about his foundation, talk about stuff, but that's how serious he is about not wanting that to put back into his life in April. Later on this month, it's going to be 18 years. I think of, wow. of sobriety and stuff. So awesome for him. But dude, just hearing that, I was just like, man, these guys, these guys are different level. Like it's a whole different thing. They're not human, but it was so cool just to hear him talk about it. And it's one thing, you know, it's, we could, yes, we could just talk about the fight. We could talk about, okay, your strategies, you can do this, 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 but this guy's out there actually trying to change people. And when you listen to him talk about it, it's more meaningful than just getting another W this week. You know, yep. of course he wants to get the W to help pay for his family, but he understands that the platform and being able to still off to the side, do the things that mean so much to him. So it was, it was awesome. And I was, so glad to, to hear from him. And I was thankful that I get that opportunity because I never know. If, there's no guarantee I get to ever have that again. I think yep. I've had some flavor of that sort of conversation with him maybe two or three times. Um, and it always amazes me. And I'm always grateful that I can because it's the kind of shit that just renew it reminds you that there's good people that can go through shitty situations, pick themselves back up and be a good beacon for others. And then, you know, that therefore drives them and keeps them on the straight and narrow as well. Every addict, every alcoholic, every, you know, anything always, you know, you might be away from it and think like, I'm good. I'm good. You always have those daily balances, you know, those daily challenges and stuff. And if this is the kind of stuff that keeps him on his path and then he sees that he's helping people out and that drives it and it just keeps the whole cyclical thing. I think it's awesome. So I, I try to give him that platform and I was glad oh, he said yeah. something. But by the end of it, I was like, I don't care if you guys think this interview went long. I was like, I was glad he fucking talked about it. <laughs> yeah, we got to be, we're, we're there anyway. Yeah. What are, we, what are you going to do? You know what you I know, mean? So I, I love true. it, man. We're stuck in the room. Right. What anyways. are we going to do? So you're just sitting in silence for the whole time? Like, yeah. All it means is it's going to take a little longer to process the video. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, who cares? I, I, I agree, man. I, I, I was glad to see those guys shut up. I was, I was a little bit bummed because, uh, Obviously, with this CFFC history, I am a Charlie Campbell fan, and I love Tr Charlie Campbell versus Trevor Peak could be an absolute banger, Peaks man. Yeah, Pink's a psycho. So I was a little bit bummed that um, those guys didn't get to be a part yeah. of the media day uh, because I, I wanted to – you know, I, look, I like seeing – the guys that come through CFFC, I love yeah. seeing them get the opportunity to be in front of, like, bigger audiences and bigger media presences. And I know they love seeing you out there as well. Yeah, it's absolutely. always kind of fun when they see you there. It is cool, man. That would have been great. Of course, today maybe it worked out great because since I didn't didn't make it there, then it, oh. maybe that's why they pulled them off. They're like, they're like, like oh, Jay not going to be here, and they're like, 
PR, we don't, we just don't even want to come. You know? <laughs> Maybe our, our they just said, what? They, they, yeah, they, no, we're out. We're out. It was good. So, by the way, I did that. And then also, after I did host the USC Unfiltered, I also taped. Actually, I showed up at the Apex probably about right about when you were leaving, I bet. Uh, but I actually taped something that I don't know that I can talk about, but it's a partnership with the USC and DraftKings that uh, I got to uh, be a part of that I filmed with. So keep an eye for that. I don't think I can mm. spoil what the content is about or what the whole project's about, but it's They've a USC DraftKings been doing a bunch of stuff. They're doing a lot of stuff, so yeah. I was. Uh, it was fun. I that obviously, we'll see how it comes out. I'm not in charge of editing and all, and all the things they do, but hopefully it comes out good because I'm always honored when I get a chance to do stuff like that. So... Uh, listen, everybody's talking about UFC 300, of course, man. That's next week. That's the big event. <laughs> yeah, you're not, you're not wrong. You know, like I, we're we're going through this fight week, but it feels like, it, and I know we're not the only ones. It feels no. like people are going through the motions because they're already prepping for next week. And I feel terrible about it. I, yeah. I just think it's natural. I mean, it is natural. Big pay per view. I think know, we do it for every pay per view. That for there, every, any event. That's, but, but 300 yeah. is yeah. crazy. And again, I know there's people that aren't. According happy to about the ads, the it's going to be the greatest fight card ever. Like it's a ever, damn ever good fight card. I'll, like ever, ever. It's a pretty damn good fight card. I <laughs> it mean, is the good. number of former champs and stuff that are. On, I know people are the, not happy with the main event, but I don't see how. I you think they're happy the with it. I think it's the way it came came together. I think at the end of the day, I think we're all happy with it. But it was just so like the process, how it just came out. We're just like, okay, okay. It was just weird. It was just to weird. get the main event basically to get last. the main event. Yeah. Yeah. And then like short notice. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> like a short notice for the guys. It's yeah, like. Yeah. You you weren't sure this is gonna be the one, but yeah. I mean it's still a step. I mean, granted, it was it was the best of what was available for right. sure, did you, which is the crazy part. But it's see, still a good one, and fucking Jamal Hill's killing it with his social bro, media. I was gonna stuff. ask you, bro, like Jamal the walk-in Hill thing? on social media. That walk-in <laughs> video, hilarious, it was so funny. He kills it on social media. Yeah. Somebody was saying he's big. I was like, of course he's a big dude, but they're like, I hope he can make weight. I was like. I don't remember him missing weight. You know, like he's gonna make weight. Oh, he'll make weight. But they were saying like he was big. And he's I was like, funny. I was man. like, don't just take that video. I was like, who knows when they filmed? I was like, yeah, he looked like he was healthy and bigger in the video, but he's light heavy, man. He's and knowing big. him, dude, like he'll stick his belly out or something just to mess yeah. with people. You know what I mean? So like, he's he is a he's a. It's big gonna dude. be a banger, man. Oh, I love it. It's but gonna the be the walking video is great. <laughs> so might, he does a lot of funny stuff. <laughs> that that might that might be as good as the one where like. Is the the, the one that the, uh, the last time I talked to him was after he had done like the video where like remember Yuri Prohaska was like filming out in the snow <laughs> and so like he went outside he's like I got snow in my I backyard for, too you know what I mean like I forgot about that one. that was so, good he's just hilarious man Jamal Hill and I, and it's funny because yeah. I know some that people was a good one. I know some people are like oh man you need to worry about training and not being on social media like bro yeah. you can't train twenty four hours a day yeah. and you have got to connect with the audience somehow so I love that he has some fun what with was it, your man. what was even the what was the one what was the last one it was the TP King or whatever, when he was walking in, he even had the. Oh, yeah, the where they were recording the things. And How then many times rolled do you think that, like, yeah. <laughs> that rollout was perfect. How many times did. That couldn't have been like the first one time. Take, bro. One it take. had to be, or it wasn't. It didn't. Certainly didn't look like they like rolled it back up to try it no, again. I no. was like, that was such a perfect take. I was just like, that was so good. It, it was so good, good man. I enjoy that. So I yeah. know everybody's looking towards 300. It's obvious. Uh, it's it's, it's, a it's big understandable. Event. It's understandable. Yeah. But I will say. Uh, but look, this is a meaningful middleweight fight. I know it's not – I guess and this will add to it too. It wasn't the fight we thought we were going to get, right? Yeah. Um, and for Brendan Allen, what would you take for Brendan Allen today? Because on the one hand, like, you know, he, he wants some revenge against Chris Curtis. But on the other hand, he thought he was going to get – beating Chris Curtis, I, it, beating Chris Curtis I don't think gets him – the recognition in the division that, that beating beat Marvin Vittori, Vittori would. Yep. And, and, and that's unfortunate yep. because Chris Curtis yep. is one of those dudes that can beat anybody yep. in the division. He's no easy out by any stretch. 100%. But it just feels like it doesn't come with the with the you know the, the, the cachet yeah. of beating Marvin Vittori. I think you're right. I mean, and, you know, as much as, you know, people put like it's a, a revenge match and this, whatever, I, until I saw the two at the end, completely forgot about that first one. Even that first yep. one was sort of like a shortest notice yep. as well. You know, I was like, I was like, oh shit, that's right, these guys did fight. You know, and there's no, I'm not gonna lie, there's to no heat. No. There's no, there's no like this lo- longing, like, oh man, that's a fight. I just can't wait till they run that one back. You mm-hmm. know, like, you know, Vittori, you know, he was just gonna talk the smack that he always does. And I mean, this is a guy that had been up there at the top, fighting for the championship and fighting, you know, being a number one contender. You beat that guy, you know, you really keep marking your claim for this. While this is a good step forward, depending on how he does it, I mean, when you think about it, I mean, it's still going back in rank. It is. You know, so yep. it's a, 
it, I mean, it's a good fight. I, lo- I Chris Curtis, to me, I think, is one of the low key funniest dudes Hilarious. as well. I mean, he's just I love the way he carries himself on the media days. He just chats. He had like a crazy shirt on today. The shirt was hilarious. Yeah, they both had funny shirts yep. on today, which was just silly. But like his his overall attitude. I mean, I see his work ethic in the gym. I see what the his teammates think about the guy. Um, he said some crazy shit today. Very like Arnold uh, Schwarzenegger esque, where he's like, you know, I'd rather be fighting than fucking. You I know, know. I was like, was I was really... like, okay, okay, I yeah. hear you. They're like, why'd you take this fight? He's like, well, I wasn't supposed to take the fight, but I love money. <laughs> yeah, I love money a lot, and I love the fight. I mean, it's gonna. I think it's gonna be a bang. I mean, yeah. I mean, if 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 people think that Chris Curtis doesn't have like as you know, I think some people when they they think that maybe Vittori offered maybe more skill set to take the fight differently in certain areas, and they think that Curtis maybe is only power. I think that's a silly way to look at it. I think Curtis is it. just as dangerous I as I think Vittori. so as well. I mean, and, and I think when he, get to, like, when he gets his hands on you, man, I'd be much more scared of Chris Curtis grabbing on you as opposed to Vittori. You know, mm-hmm. Vittori, like, nobody's thinking, like, oh, Marvin can't wait till Marvin just grabs a hold of him and, and just throws him down to the ground or whatever. Like, Marvin just wants to knock you out standing, just wants to beat you down. Like, Curtis literally wants to throw you to the ground and pound your brains in. Allen, I did pick Allen in this one. Yeah, me too. Um, I think he is a more well-rounded fighter. But, man, if Chris Curtis goes out there and just <laughs> walks forward and throws everything and catches him and knocks him out flat, I would not be surprised. The dude's got sick power. And you just wonder if it's, you know, again, kind of a trap fight for Brendan Allen. He thought yep. this was going to be his breakthrough moment. Now yep. I don't think it can be his breakthrough moment. Yep. You know I mean? I know he's still saying, look, I win this. It's not my fault. Like, you yep. gotta, you got to give me the big challenge. And I, and I, I agree with that. You yep. know what I mean? But you still wonder, you know what I mean? Like, does the does the the the, the honing of the focus that you had does yeah. it shift a little bit because you're like, oh, I thought I was fighting this guy, not yeah. that guy. It would be a serious mistake on his part. I don't think I. I and listening to him today, I definitely don't think he's taking it lightly, and right. I definitely don't think he's not prepared. Um, he was saying some of the right things today, you know, like definitely not that he, you know, he thinks that he's Chris has gotten better than what he had before but I mean you, you see some of these matches when uh, and he said like he just happened to catch him first he's like you go back and you look at the fight we were both thrown down we were both hitting he's like I just caught him first mm-hmm. you know and that ended the fight that same sort of thing can happen in this one they can go in there and start banging and maybe Curtis catches him first I mean you never you never know but man I definitely don't think he's going to take it lightly um, it would be a mistake if he's going in there and he thinks that oh hey this is a step back I don't have to give as much because it's not going to be as tough like you know you know the other guy was more for ranking I just I just got to show up and, and it's going to yeah. take care of itself I, I would hope that he's not playing it and I think he's smart enough that he wouldn't do that sort of thing because Chris Curtis is way too dangerous to do it. And he's the kind of guy that will steal the fight from you if you don't – if you're not – if you don't take the fight and take the fight away from Curtis, he's going to take the fight away from you. Yep. And, um, boy, man, uh, just listen, both guys were great. But, yeah, Curtis, man, I was he was killing me in his in his media day. He was just – he was the first person that showed up, showed up early. And then luckily they kept moving because, you know, anytime they come in like 30 minutes early, they're like, hey, we're going to start early. I was like, fuck, does that mean we're going to have a 30-minute break right from the get-go? <laughs> Usually. Because it was supposed to be Court McGee first, and we actually got him like third or fourth or fifth down the line or whatever, and Chris Kurt, Chris uh, came in first. And then I was like, oh, man, I hope we don't have a long break. But he came in and immediately just woke the room up. I oh. mean, he's got such an infectious personality. How about, did you did you feel a little bit bad for Sam Alvey as Chris Curtis oh, was pulling my. back the curtains oh. on that one, man? Like I was like, it was, part of me was cracking up, but he was <laughs> laughing so hard at Sam Alvey that kind of made me feel bad for Sam Alvey. If anybody yeah. didn't see this clip, Chris Curtis just got added yeah. to the video game. So he was asked about being added to the video game. He starts talking about the fact that, you know, his, his ratings, you know, better be right or whatever. He's like, because yeah. I don't want to be like Sam Alvey. He's like, I was living with Sam Alvey at the time. And his ratings came out, and he was, like, actually depressed. Yeah. But as he was telling the story, he was just cracking up so much. He, continued, felt he bad. continued on after we got after. He's like, I'm telling you. He's like, you know, he's like, poor Sam. He was like, he was about in tears. He's like, I just don't want it to be like that for me. <laughs> he felt so bad for Sam Alvey. Which is funny because Sam never – Sam is he's smiling. Sam, smiling for Sam, Sam. And it's like, okay, we found the kryptonite. <laughs> Get, put <laughs> put bad stats in the EA game, and the smile will go away. <laughs> oh, that's funny. He's, pe- he's peeling back the curtain yeah. there, man. Letting you see. I thought it was pretty funny. Good yeah. main event. Co main event should be fun as well. Alexander yeah. Hernandez versus Damon Jackson. It was a fight that when they announced, uh, you just knew it was going to be a banger. I mean, both these guys come to scrap. Um, you know, I like both these guys as well. Obviously, yeah. you know, Damon, uh, a great dude. He's got the Fortis tie and all that. Um, 
Alexander Hernandez is we've just I think we've always just liked him as a character, man. He's just an interesting, intense dude um, that's tried to chill out a little bit over time, but it still <laughs> has that intensity at his base. You and know some what I mean? Of his moments today still still has a little bit of it. Um, and 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 then and then we find out there's a little bit of bad blood brewing. Here. And when Damon says no bad blood, but he's like, I just don't like the guy. I don't like his face. Yeah. Well, well, and then he was like, I didn't like the way he talked about like Donald Cowboy Cerrone, Cerrone right? And it was just like, okay, I get it. But I was like, but why would you even bring that up? It was just kind of interesting. And I didn't really think anything about it. I was like, right. oh, he's just making an off-head condom. He's Whatever. like, well, my coach is tight with Cowboy. And, and obviously everybody remembers the Alexander Hernandez talking yeah. trash about Cowboy. And the, just the world turned on him. And then yeah. Cowboy went out and beat him. And that was the that was the hard thing that Alexander Hernandez has had yeah. you know, for his career to get back on like people liking him or whatever. But he is just an interesting cat. Uh, yeah. But Damon, yeah, took that – took he. He, I was offended by I that. I was offended by it. And then Amy, being the little fire starter that she is, she's like, well, do you know that your your opponent seems to not like you? And he's like, oh, really? He was like, you know, I'm, I was like, I don't have any feelings any particular way towards him. He's like, he like, doesn't like you because of the way that you uh, talked about Cowboy or whatever. And he's like, oh, he's going to get fired up about that? And he's like, well, that's, that's awful, awful homosexual of him. <laughs> <laughs> There's something along that. He's like, that's very homosexual. I forget how he phrased it, but uh, he, he didn't. He just, is not politically he just, correct. Yeah, he, he just is, didn't he come out and PC. say like, oh man, well that was that sounds gay. You know, he's like, that was very homosexual of him, and then he just chuckled and went on about it. And I'm sure people are gonna shit on us because we're nasty. I'm at the point. I'm like, bro, if he wants to say something silly like that, you know, it's you know, I have gay friends, or whatever. But I still found it funny. I was right. just like, whatever, I get it. You know, like I'm not gonna fucking like, oh, okay. How dare you, Mr. Hernandez, say that? I get it that you were joking and we have no sense of humor anymore today. I'm going to yell at you about it. I was just I, like, whatever. But, of course, that was our headline, and I was like, okay, now people are just going to throw it again on oh, us that geez. we put it out in the headline or whatever. So it is what it is. But, uh, yeah, Aaron was uh, – he, he was uh, Mr. Hernandez was uh, was fired up. Alexander, I don't want to call him Aaron because there's a different Aaron Hernandez. Ooh, that one has made some bigger mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, he <laughs> he's still paying for them. <laughs> that one has made some issues. Yeah. So. so that should be a banger. So, like, I think there's that's going to be a good one. Uh, Morgan Shire. I homered on that one. I did. I did pick Jackson. Wow. You know, that's just it's so tough. It's I, so hard for me. I'm, I, I haven't made an official pick yet there, but I'm thinking Damon Jackson as well. And I think it's a complete. I thought his. Home. I, I thought his last homer pick. I thought his last fight he looked really, really good. Um, but man, yeah, I I felt like I homered on that one a little bit. But, but I'm fine with that. Morgan Sharia, Shepe Mariscal. That was a bit of a pick em. That's a, that's Ooh, a good fight yeah, as well. Yeah, man, uh, I did. I think I went Shepe, but, man, listen to Morgan chat today, man. Um, boy, he sounds focused. He sounds focused. That That's going to be a fun one, I think. I mean, look at it. I mean, like, who really knows these names? And they're third from the top. I mean, I, I can see where somebody's like, who are those, these guys to go? They have fought in the UFC before, but, yep. I mean, like, they're not high up in the division or this, anything, this, but I mean, it's definitely that they're putting them in a spotlight position. I mean, like you're smack dab, you know, at the top of the card of the the, the fight card. So I'm expecting really good things because if that fight stinks and it's so high on high up, people are just going to shit on the card. No, I think they're going to be they're able they're gonna scrap. Bring it. I think they're going to be able to scrap, and this is their opportunity, right? I mean, you've got to yep. give the, these guys that are kind of early in their career, you got to give them a little yep. bit of shine, right? Because um, they're going to try – listening to them today, they feel like you're going to go out and they're going to do it. And, I mean, the matchmakers now, I mean, pretty confident they know what they're doing. Like, they know who's going to have the potential to, to, to kind of set that card off. But it was interesting. I was, I was really, really surprised some of the guys that they uh, – jumped over if, if looking at this topology if this is the actual order that it goes on to well the rest of the main card according to UFC.com Ignacio Bahamandes and Christos Giagos Walter that should Walker. be a fun one yeah that should be a fun one uh, Walter Walker versus Lucas Breschke should be probably violent at heavyweight uh, and then I think Trevor Peak and Charlie Campbell could be an absolute banger at lightweight as well so that's the main card by the way it is a six six Fight main six card. fight main card, but it does start at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. So it's a little bit earlier in the day than than last week was we in Atlantic City. It, yeah, that was that was that was late. Yeah, that was like oh, that was rough. Sitting around waiting to work. I was literally at like one o'clock our time was like okay, isn't it about Let's to start? Go. And I was like nope. nope. I was like damn it. Poor Nolan out there on the East Coast yeah. for you guys, man. It's uh, I, yeah, I know. And look, I know it just sounds like some old man crying or something, but I just. I wish these fight nights were early. Like the the pay per no views, I get it, man. Pay per view, that's why? the whole thing. Like that like, one, why? Well, why? I have no idea. Unless, why. unless it's just you know, just Atlantic for the local City crowd. wanted it. Yeah, they, Late, for the they local want a crowd. Time. They want a nighttime thing. A Saturday night. Had to thing. be. I was like, it doesn't make any damn sense. Uh, Court McGee versus Alex Morono, as we mentioned, a battle of two vets there. Yeah. Uh, Norman Dumont versus Jermaine Durand. I, I'm excited <laughs> for this one, man. It's going to be interesting, right? Because Dumont hasn't. 
to, first of all, I'm just gonna. I've, I've, I'm, I'm very. I don't say a lot about the, the rankings. I do vote on the rankings committee, as a lot of people know. I, I always give the the results every week. I don't like to be critical of other people, right? But Norma Dumont is currently ranked number 11 in the women's bantamweight rankings, despite the fact that she has never competed at bantamweight. And I think that is one of the dumbest rankings things. That is ridiculous. It's dumb. I don't even have her on my rankings. You can't be ranked in a division if you haven't even fought there yet. And it is They're one like, of the guys. Look at her. She's a knockout. So they, so they have her there, and it's crazy. That doesn't make any sense at all. She's number eleven and hasn't even fought. So at can't you like pounds. petition? Can't you? Can't you pull weight and just say, "Hey guys, you know who I am." <laughs> no, I don't you think might, you might have seen way. me on the unfiltered podcast <laughs> recently. <laughs> so my opinion means more my than opinion yours. Means... She should not be ranked. But <laughs> here she is. She's making the cut down to one thirty-five. I'm assuming it'll be one thirty-six. Um, I'm interested to see if she makes it. You know what I mean? She's she hasn't. You know, it hasn't been easy for her. And then you see Jermaine coming back. Who uh, long was, time away, boy. Listen, I'm a little surprised at the odds in this one, man. Uh, Jermaine is an underdog. I get it. Long time away. She's up there in age. Um, I, I, I got all those things, but I, I think maybe people are kind of maybe it, forgetting how good odds? she is. How far off is she? So uh, the odds that they have listed at UFC.com right now, anyway, which I'm assuming the DraftKings odds, they're not far off. It's Norma DeMont at minus 155 and Jermaine Duran to be at plus 130. So it's not high off, but that's still. good. That's good dog money right there. Right? That's dog uh, money. Maybe I'm crazy and I'm thinking that that's going to look ridiculous. Her. Yeah. I picked her. I, I am too. I like, I like Dumont. I, one, I think she's – I love her voice. I think she's hot. But, it, like, this – GDR is the real deal. Yes. Even though she hasn't fought in three years, three and a half years. But you know it's not like she was sitting on the couch. Yeah. I mean, she's a lifelong athlete. I think she's a full-time cop as well. You know what I mean? Like, she's not just sitting around, like, you know, eating bonbons or something. Dude, that's you know? that's good dog money. I'd find a nice so little too. pick with that and do a little parlay, man. That's good. So too. That's crazy. The other one I think is – It's got to be a popularity contest on that thing. I think Somebody's so, too. Just and you money. just look at the ranking, yeah. and which, again, ranked in division. No, <laughs> no offense – no offense, because look, <laughs> she's she's a client of our good friend Alex Davis, where yep. where my my, Alex, I saw my Alex kid trains, today. my yep. kid trains under Alex Davis. You yep. know what I mean? So I'm not. It's just it's no offense to her. I just yep. don't understand how you can be ranked in a division that you've never, never even competed fought. in. It doesn't you know make what I mean? any sense. Uh, Pedro Falcao and Victor Hugo, Pierre Rodriguez, Cynthia Cavillo. I kind of like Cynthia Cavillo as an underdog as well, even though she's had losses. She's lost to some very high level competition. Yeah. Um, she's just a minor underdog as well. Uh, Dan Argetta versus John Matsumoto. We'll talked to Dan Argetta today on Unfiltered, so check out that podcast. He is uh, he's a character, man. He is he is dialed yeah, in, and ready to go. He's in, he's intense. <laughs> he's intense. A little. It was a uh, it was a little bit, and uh, you know, I, I think they're kind of from the same area, but it, it reminded you of lived in this, like it reminded me a little a little Tony Ferguson in there in in the way he was talking today on on Unfiltered. So did he capitalize all of the words as he said them? <laughs> <laughs> Every other letter, just it just yeah. God. Tony Ferguson capitalizing the letters just to piss people off. Uh, Dylan Bucca versus Cesar Almeida and uh, Melissa Mullins versus Nora Cornell as well. So, listen, again, it's one of those uh, – I do think there's going to be a handful of matchups on here that, that we really enjoy, but I get it. It's not getting any limelight when USC 300s. 300s right around the corner. Yeah. Not, you know, and looking at the card, even when you just go down and you just read it right there, I'm like, there's good fights on there. I mean, this – People will, will poop on it and say it's a, a typical fight night car, but it's gonna it's gonna end up being a good night of fights. Mm-hmm. We're gonna enjoy the fights gonna come out of like I'm I'm confident and hopeful that we're gonna get a nice bit of finishes. Maybe hopefully the ones that don't go uh, that go to a decision are are, are are good fun ones. And when you look at the lineup, man, it is a good lineup. Um it really, really is. It really is. It's not the only big time MMA that you're getting this week as well. Oh, really? A, a is reminder, there something else going on? A reminder that uh, the PFL is kicking off as well. Now I'll tell you about the stuff that I'm doing a part of as well. By the way, if you're if you're in the media and you want to be part of the media call tomorrow afternoon, uh, please do so. I'll be hosting that. I love hosting the media calls for the PFL. Uh, but the PFL season is kicking off in San Antonio on Thursday night, so uh, definitely want to check that out as well. The heavyweights and the women's flyweights divisions are uh, are kicking off, so that should be uh, a, a fun start there. I to be honest. Um, Liz Carmouche versus Juliana Velasquez. That's I think gonna be a good one. I think that's one of the fights I'm probably looking forward to the most on the, yeah. on the entire card. If I'm being honest with you, um, I will say if you're in San Antonio, the uh, the venue that they use there because I was down there for the last show in, in San Antonio is actually a very very uh, very cool venue, very small. So that one's on there. Uh, Dakota Tacheva is in the uh, women's flyweight division. Obviously, she was victorious in the European tournament last year. Now she's here in the in the global tournament as well. She's talented, man. She's very, very talented. 
Um, and just an exciting young prospect that's getting thrown in there. Tyler Santos, who came over from the UFC, a little bit of a yep. surprise departure, I think, from the UFC. She's I mean, a good fighter. Really good fighter. <clears throat> I mean, you look at the run of people that she fought, you know, Aaron Blanchfield, Valentina Shevchenko, yeah. Joanne Wood, Roxanne Motiferi, Jillian Robertson, Molly McCann. I mean, that's legit. Legit, man. That's and, legit. I, and I think she's good. So um, anxious to see that. That's a good get for them. Steve Mowry is in there. Uh, yeah. Lucas Brennan is, is on the card as well. I, I'm a big uh, – Lucas Brennan fan, man. Uh, he uh, undefeated record. He was kind of a, a prospect rising up the ranks. Um, son of Chris Brennan, of course. Um, the uh, the legend, the old school MMA fans will certainly remember. So PFL is kicking off, and their schedule will get underway this Thursday night. And uh, man, here they go. You know, it's like you had the, the 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 Bellator PFL crossover, then you had Bellator. Now you're kind of just getting back into. What PFL does, right? They'll go for the next three weeks. So they got Thursday, April the 4th, and then Friday, April the 12th, right here in Las Vegas. That's the night before UFC 300. And then they go Friday, April the 19th in, at the Wind Trust Arena out in Chicago. So um, their season will be fully underway there. So, you know, it is, I, I do, man, I, one of the big things I think that's going to help the PFL, because one of their biggest challenges has always been they do this. And then they go away for two months, right? Because all their fighters have to recover and they have to get ready for the next one. And, like, how do you stay in the news in between? I think the fact that now you can throw some Bellator events in there yeah. and it's still the same company, so you can still talk about the same things. I, I think that's going to help them out a little bit. But that kicks off on uh, on Thursday night. So Should be a good one. You mean tomorrow? Yeah. Gosh, it is tomorrow <laughs> night. Tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Yeah, they had the wings. We saw that Daniel James, I think, missed missed uh, missed it by a pound or something like Did that. Did you really? I didn't see those yet. I was... Yeah, I'd, I'd have to go back because it was happening, I think, while uh, the media day or something. But I thought I saw something like Daniel James maybe missed. So I think that what that means he's fined and he, like, loses a point or something. Wow. The weird sort of stuff. But I think so. I hope I'm not speaking out of turn. But I thought I, thought I saw that come over in the Slack channel. Uh, Valentin Moldovsky in the main event as well, so that's going to be a good opportunity for him against Antti That's going to be a good one. That's a good fight right there, that and be that'll a be a, a, a big opportunity for him in there. So um, a lot of fights and I'm excited about. And uh and Linton Vassell. Yep. That's a good one. That's a great one as well, man. Yeah. So some fun stuff. But, yeah, that, I'm I'm excited for that Comrish Velasquez one. I think so too. I think that'll be fun. I, I think that'll it. be fun. I know a lot of people are hiring Dakota. So getting to see her in there, so that'll be good. I just noticed that they put her on the main card as well. Yeah. I thought she was on the uh, on the undercard, but she's actually on the main card. Yeah, they're, they're high on her for sure. Well, and, the, and and for good reason. I mean, like if PFL and Bellator, all that sort of stuff. I mean, like I think they realize it's it's the it's the names, it's these these fighters that they could build up. Look what they were able to do with like Bellator was able to do with like AJ McKee and those cats. <sighs> I think they realize if they get a good fighter and they get him in there and they they have the 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 swagger, the look, the talk. They build superstars. I mean, that's if, if they want to compete with the UFC outside of just putting on great fights, they got to have character. They got to make people want to watch their stuff. And I mean, they're doing a pretty good job of bringing some of these fighters over. And I think that's probably a play to kind of show mm -hmm. show their hand and say, oh, by the way, we have some some top notch uh, ladies. You guys need to pay attention to over as well. So should be good, man. Yeah, good for them, man. It's a, a run of weekend after weekend after weekend on that one. You're gonna try to do. Um, the Vegas one? So I won't. I won't be here. I won't. Oh, okay. So I'm doing. Um, I will be in Atlantic City for CFSC 131. Oh, so gotcha. I'm flying coast to coast. So I'm gonna miss that one. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it either. It's just a long day, man. Yeah, you mentioned it. Unless, tough. unless I just, just say screw up, and I'm like, I'd rather just watch it on TV instead of like go work it. No offense to them. It's just a long day. Heard, and then we got the fight night. I heard you might have some help over here that maybe. Uh... <sighs> I'm talking about that, but I mean that's a possibility. I don't know if I'm. Oh, you mean to send him there? I'll keep that under wraps. Yeah, for now, that could I... be fun to actually maybe take him. Up. Oh, I'm not going to talk myself into it. I, well, I won't. Pro I won't promise. I guess I'll keep it open. Well, maybe mind. maybe you split the duties. Now you have somebody else that can handle it. Well, we weren't even really planning to cover it at all. But you weren't having plan on an extra having an extra body here either. I know. Well, I'm not going to suggest it. <laughs> if he you don't want to make some extra work for somebody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. A, like, I'll let somebody else say that. True that, true that. Yeah, yeah, don't be yeah, What are you volunteering me volunteer for volunteer volunteer work for? You. <laughs> I volunteered for you to do something. <laughs> That's great. No, no. Uh, all right, so listen, that is on uh, ESPN in the United States, uh, DAZN in Canada, Europe. Check that ESPN out. ESPN Plus, but, right? 
ESPN Plus. Yes, the ESPN and ESPN Plus. ESPN 2 and ESPN Plus, I should say. Prelims on ESPN Plus, main card on ESPN 2. So check that out. But, you know, make sure you got your dual screen setup going on <laughs> uh, because you're also going to want to check out Fury Professional Grappling. Oh, yeah, why is that? Nine, uh, well, what's going on there? I mean, uh, you know, if you want to see your boy John Morgan in action, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, Is there any bulls? Is there going to be a bull? There's no bulls. Uh. Uh, well, that's but I will I will say um, so it'll be me. Um, Punk is not going to be able to be there because obviously he's got uh, WrestleMania week, so that's obviously a big thing out in Philadelphia, yeah. and he's going to be a part of it, even though he's hurt and can't compete. But I think you're going to want to see it number one because it's a, it's another event um, working with the military. It's at the Air National Guard base uh, in Savannah, Georgia. Very cool. Um, so working with the Air National Guard. Um, so I'm I'm told that the you know we're inside a hangar once again. So you're going to oh, have like the military cool background equipment shit. and stuff. Cool background. There. It's closed off, so that's, there's no even public. I can tickets. see your testosterone level already just rising. Just Brr, thinking about just, it. Uh, you like know it. me. You know me. <laughs> And, and heavy artillery, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, but no, but I love being around. I love being around, especially because the events where it's not like it's not even open to the public. Like it's yeah. just open to like the it's military the and their. Fa- it's for yeah. the troops. It's a fight yeah. for the troops, and I I love that man because yeah, they get to cool. come see it. Uh, but Colton Smith, you want to see some people be showing up at the very start? Troops show up. Oh yeah, they show up. They're like, oh, you're putting this on for us. And, and we can maybe have some drinks there. Like, let's do this. Let's We're going to be this. there. So, Colton Smith, uh, if you remember the Ultimate oh, Fighter 61. Oh, crap. Yeah. Yeah, he is, he is actually going to be um, my co-commentator. So, I'm oh, excited. that's awesome. Yeah, I haven't seen him forever, man. And so, we were yeah. chatting via text. And that's so, funny. he's excited. I'm excited to work with them. Um, and he's the perfect guy to do it, right? Because uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, black belt, but also uh, an extensive military history as yeah. well. Uh, 18 years of service. Wow. And you know what's funny is, and, and this won't mean a lot to a lot of people, but it'll mean something to you and to the hardcores. I actually got a text from John Wayne Troxel today. Did you? He said, I heard that you're working with my good friend Colton Smith. And I was like, oh, your good friend? I was like, cool. I didn't know you guys were tight like that. But I was like, if he's got your respect, you know, I love I mean, obviously I obviously knew Colton from his UFC yeah. run. But I was like, that's so awesome. And and John Wayne Troxel said he was actually my operations assistant in the Pentagon so he was with me on my travels all over the world, man. So Colton That's and John Wayne worked close together. So small world all coming back together, man. So I'm excited to, to see him there. But Wow. When he was the senior enlisted advisor? Mm-hmm. Dude, that's killer. Yeah, he was his assistant there. That's awesome. Yeah, Troxel is the real deal. When we first met him, he was uh, just the command sergeant major there uh, in Japan on that base that we were in. He was still command sergeant major. Then he went on and became the senior enlisted advisor to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And the senior non-commissioned officer of the U.S. Armed Forces from December 11, 2015, until he retired in 2019. Like, that's the highest enlisted, highest position that an enlisted serviceman can get. Yep. So, yeah, it was it was fucking, it was really, that's, so that's, for for military people, that's that's pretty cool dudes hitting you up. Yeah, so I mean, like, every once in a while, I'll, I'll trade, like, texts with them or twi- uh, yep. tweets and stuff with them, and I'm always like, ah, He's uh he's he's the real deal and stuff. So it's funny because my uh, you know talk to my mom who had a career working with the military and other stuff you know and name drops people and stuff. She this is one I could always throw towards. I'm like well you know I was hanging out with the senior enlisted advisor to the team. you know and she's like what? yep that's a good one that's, that's a good, good one, one. <laughs> that's a good that's a good challenge coin that's to cool, carry though. around. Yes that mean but that's cool. I had no idea that uh, I didn't either that he was uh that he worked for him. So pretty that's cool pretty man. Big. Those our worlds coming together and yeah. uh, it was funny I I didn't remember this about Colton um. That I, 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 he holds the distinction of being the only service member to fight in the USC while still on active duty. I totally forgot about that. that so, oh, so, I think I do remember yeah, that. So still on active duty yeah. while he was doing it. So uh, anyway, perfect fit, man. A shout out to the CFFC team, man. For you know, obviously we'd love to have Punk there, but uh, he's got WWE duties. So to find somebody to replace him, I thought, man. Nailed it on this one. You know what I mean? How cool is that that he's yeah. going to be there? So, looking forward to that. So, you know, the main event, it's uh, Chuck Buffalo, Charles Radke versus your boy, Eric Anders, in the main event. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy Flick, uh, UFC Flyweight, is in the co-main event. Obviously, a submission machine. He'll be there against Marcelo Cohen. Uh, Miguel Baeza is in against Guillermo Nevis. And Jose Perez, the reigning CFFC featherweight champion, who I thought for sure – was going to be on the Ultimate Fighter, but was not selected for it. He's in action against Max Livingston as well. So uh, we've got nine matches coming for you tomorrow night. I've actually, it's crazy, man. Uh, I'm actually, I'm catching the red eye tonight. Uh, so it's, dude, this this week and next week are going to be some, or I'm in the middle of a crazy stretch, but I love it. I wouldn't have it any other way. But taking a red eye tonight, so I'm leaving in just a couple hours, flying through Charlotte, Charlotte to Savannah. While I'm in Savannah, Ooh. 
while I'm in Savannah, uh, hosting the PFL media call tomorrow, and then we'll head on over to the to the air base to to set up for Fury Professional Grappling Nine on USC Fight Pass. So uh, busy, man, busy, busy, man. A cool. Then cool you're gonna come back to town, do another staycation, then hit on the road again. Well, that's why you know you have to. When you're always when gone, you can. you're gone now so much that when you come back home, you do staycations just, in Vegas because you're not, like, can, you just got it, off the road. Can we pretend like we're gone but be at home? <laughs> like that's what I want to do. That's uh, funny. It is funny. That's awesome. Hey, I want to ask you one last thing before we jump off. I know, uh, like I said, I got to go out here. Uh, Ronda Rousey in the news this week. I, I, I just, I, f- I want to say. About her book? Yeah. Uh, feel, yeah. And, and, and people jumping on her. And, I, you know, I don't know, man. I just, I as somebody who lived through the Ronda Rousey era, who, who actually got a first row seat to a lot of it, you know, got an opportunity to call some of her fights for tough enough as an amateur and obviously you and I man we covered all that you were still working for the UFC at that time yep. right so i mean you didn't even necessarily cover it from the outside you were right there yeah, alongside right when yeah right when she transitioned over i just look i know she soured a lot of people with the way she departed the sport right yeah. she didn't you know she didn't ever speak to the media she kind of got done with all that and and she explained a lot of it in some of the interviews that she's done but and so i know she upset a lot of people but i, I just I feel like people are trying to go back and rewrite history and talk about, you know, her skill level like or what she, she that, actually wasn't been. that good. Yeah, yeah it's she, ridiculous. She was good. She yep. was really good. And there's not a, 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 a woman on the UFC roster that doesn't owe a debt of gratitude to Ronda yeah. Rousey. Now, I'm not saying that there weren't pioneers before Ronda Rousey because there were. Sure. And they deserve credit as well. Yep. And I'm not saying that there wouldn't have been somebody after Ronda if yep. it wasn't Ronda. But it was Ronda. Yep. She was the one that got Dana White to be like, you know what? Let's roll the dice on this. Let's 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 go for it. Let's do this in the UFC. Yep. Um, and I think because of that she's owed a debt of gratitude. And man, you you especially you had an even closer seat than I did to see the amount of work that she put in to help further herself, of course. Yeah. But the sport, you know oh, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, dude, she did. It was nonstop interview. promo, yeah, nonstop promos, nonstop whatever. I mean, we did multiple stuff even for the Las Vegas convention. Like we did that shoot at the. Uh, at the stratosphere where we took her up on the top, shot her up in the air. We were at the the Mandalay doing the shark dive stuff. I mean, like, stuff that I know was fun, but it was also like it's work. we were capitalizing as much as we could. And that was the Las Vegas convention saying convention center saying, like, we want to get involved with what the UFC is doing. We, we realize how big this woman is, and we want to get on board and show, hey, people, come to Vegas. Look at Ronda doing these things in Vegas, and you can do them too, you know? she was It was a nonstop um, media circuit that she was on, and for she was carrying the sport. Whether or not she was – it wasn't like she was going out and trying to say, like, hey, I'm the best thing in women's MMA, but she was carrying that torch at the time, and she deserves to get the credit for – carrying that the the brunt of that on her back same thing people put a lot of stuff on what you can't take away what connor was able to do and mm-hmm. carry the name up just because he carried on his back as well whether he wanted to or not you know that was put on him and he did a good job and the same thing for ronda a lot was put on her back whether she asked for it or not you know and she did a great job of it and at the very end of the day you know like part of it you know same with social media the same with everything People feel entitled to get things from everybody. Like they, I'm gonna tweet you, and I'll be damned. You better tweet me back. You better say something to me. It's like right. no, you're not given that. You know. So at the end of her career, yes, would we want her to maybe exit differently and give us explanations and tell us things to appease us? Yes, we all wanted that. But did she have to? Did she owe us anything? Did she owe us that? Not a no, damn she thing. didn't. You know, she did what she needed to do. So, I mean, like, if people still have sour grapes about how her exit was or whatever, like, bro, get over it. Like, to to rewrite history and say that she wasn't great at the time, you got to remember what the sport, the sport has changed and for men and for women. When the sport, you know, started, the men then were great at what they were doing, but they're nothing compared to the guys that have been doing this nonstop forever and ever because people watch that. Ronda, when she came out, and just the same thing, but if people couldn't defend the arm bar, it dominated. Yep. You know, it dominated. And then eventually people figured it out and figured out that, hey, all I have to do is shut that down. And then the, she needs to be well rounded in another area. And her striking and stuff was able to carry her at the time because she was an overall just dangerous. But to say she wasn't a great fighter, I can see where somebody's like, if you're going back and you're like, well, let's just, for purists, let's rate her striking on the greatest scale of whatever. Right. Like, don't do that. It'd be like saying Hoist Gracie wasn't a great fighter. 
Exactly. He was an incredible fighter. And you saw what happened the era, the and the time. Yeah, and yes. he came back at USC 60, and guess what? He yeah. didn't look it. Why? Because the sport yeah. had evolved in the game. Yeah. But somebody had to be the one that started it, and somebody it. had to be the best to start She was a with. fire starter. She I did, mean, she, and, and she the, started the, it. The type of well, attention. Well, she started, but she, she, she put it. She was the one that made little girls that were watching it like, wow, who is this? I want to do that. And I want to do that, you know. And then some of them now – are in the sport, you know. So I mean, that's she gets she deserves credit for that. I mean, like for somebody to go back and and like you said, rewrite history and say that she wasn't ever good for that period when she was fighting, she was great. Yep. Because she kept winning. If she wasn't great, she wouldn't have kept winning. You know, like you know, as much as you know, people maybe even say like, oh well, she should have had. You know, I mean, she fought for the strike force belt. Damn near took Misha's arm off. Oh, yeah, I mean, like, she put on great fights. And, and that's like trying to say, okay, the people that she fought, you're saying Misha's not a good fighter? You're trying to say all these other things? I mean, like, it's it's just ridiculous. I mean, people just people just want to, I feel sometimes, just want to argue about shit. You know, I'm glad she wrote a book. I'm glad she got her words out. I mean, she did it on her own calendar, or her, yep. her own time frame, and good for her. I, I, I mean, I... I'm sure someday maybe I'll pick it up or whatever. I'm not going to rush out and get it, but I don't right. rush out and get any books anymore. No. You know, if it's an anime, then maybe I'll order it. <laughs> or, but, or a Korean rom com. Or book. if it's a Korean. <laughs> no, those those I only watch on the oh, TV. Yeah. You know, because I don't really read Korean. <laughs> that would be weird to have a Korean print and then have a subtitle underneath it. Like, what would be the point <laughs> of that? Just write it in English, you know. But uh, no, I mean, uh, that's too bad that people want to just. I think anything, you know, you put. You know any of these iconic figures put anything out? I think we can see that in other sports where, like, you know, uh, NFL heroes or NFL legends might put a book, and I'm sure somebody's going to shit on on those books as well. So it's probably par for the course. But um, for people to say that Ronda didn't make a great contribution to the sport would just be silly. I agree, it would man. Just be ridiculous. I just haven't I haven't liked some of the things I've seen out there. Yeah. I don't know if it's just like new fans or like you said, just a social media era. But it's like, don't try to go back and rewrite. I history, think it's the man. social media. But man, I I tell you, man, I for being just on the UFC side of things, some of the grind that they put her through, like going place to place, Dude, and the, she, it was never ending. She put it on her back. It was back, never man. ending. Cause I was just shooting it, and there would be days at the end I was like, I am beat, and I'm like, let alone to be the face, be on the camera. Right. Can smile. Can we do that again? Smile a little bit better on this one. Can you blah, 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 and it's like, <sighs> you're like, and this, they were, they were already expecting her to be, act like a superstar, even though you don't know how, it's like, and I, you're not trained to be a superstar, you just, it comes out of how it is. People expect her to be a superstar yeah. right from the get-go. You're making and so it up as you so go. Much you stuff, don't know. So much stuff. Yeah, it was just crazy. I mean, that's 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 a bit off-putting that people would try to, uh, you know, shit on her contribution to the stuff. I mean, it, it is what it is. But I just know I respect for the work that she put on um, during a lot of the days because she was very, very cordial. She was very, very polite to me. Um, yep. And I know a lot of those days were super, super long days. Even just like that shoot at the the Mandalay at the Shark the Shark Tank. I can't remember if that was one day or two day, two days. But it was just ridiculous. Put it on like pounds and pounds of gear, just to try to do these different little shoots and all this other stuff. And it's like, I'm just a fighter, yeah, you yeah, know. I'm just a me. fighter, <laughs> you know. But they're like, no, we're expecting. You. Now you're an actor now. But look what happened. Yeah, she did get into acting she after it. <laughs> I mean, well, so I was going to ask you, speaking of you talking about rushing out to watch, have you seen Roadhouse yet? I've seen like the, fr I haven't seen Connor and I, I start, I started watching it and then I was like, ah, oh, I'm just not in the mood. Like I, I started cheesing out on some of the shit, like even just the, some of the scenes before and I was like, this is going to be rough. And I like Jake Gyllenhaal, but, uh. No, I haven't. I haven't finished I haven't seen it. it yet, I, need, I need to put it back on. I just every time when I try to find the motivation, I'm just, it just goes away. And it's funny because like I, I so people that have watched it, there's like a scene on the boat before Connor get there. You see like one of the bad guys is getting his face shaved, and the boat's rocking, and he's getting mad. The guy's shaving it, and the acting was so effing bad. I was just like, I can't continue watching this. <laughs> I was like, Connor hasn't even made it in here, and I was like, I don't want to watch. Maybe you just it gotta skip straight to the Connor stuff. You know. <laughs> Who is it? The phrase that they're like, they said the road, uh, maybe it was Alex or somebody said that the roadhouse was the perfect movie to put on while washing dishes and doing laundry. So you're not really paying attention. I, I do want, I will give it a try. I will finish it. I will watch it. I am going to do it. I just have not done it yet because every time I try, I'm just like, 
I, I don't I watch I a lot do of movies just because I don't have a chance to sit down for that long. Yeah. But, uh, and it's but not Korean. It's it not, if it was dubbed in Korean, then I'd, d- I'd probably get through it or something. I bet you could do that. <laughs> I bet you could do it. Maybe put it in. I bet they got a way to do that. Put Korean <laughs> audio on there with some subtitles or something. I would watch it. I bet. <laughs> I bet it would be outstanding. But did you see the press release that came out? Uh, 50 million worldwide viewers yeah. over the first two weekends on Prime Video. Uh, that's pretty we, incredible. We, talk, we talked about that. Now, so I know I watched it for a little bit, so I'm sure my number is one of those those right. numbers. Now, I can see where Connor – if somebody like Connor or somebody tries to say, like, man, just think, if that was a theatrical release, how much money we would make the 50 million – they would no, not get no, fifty million because people wouldn't be paying. No, Nobody, that's why it was the perfect people. place to put it. it was right, perfect. It was the it perfect was place. Perfect. Those numbers are absolutely insane. They would have. They would have nowhere near. No, like a, a fraction. I'm, I mean, let's be real. I mean, but, like, and the other thing too is that you know people are like, oh, it's so cheesy, but like. The first Roadhouse was cheesy, right? Like yeah. it's kind of supposed hey, to be that way. Careful. Like it's it's careful you're treading on legendary ground. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's like, I, will I, will rip your th- I will rip your throat out right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're right. It was super cheesy. I mean, but it, I think it's cheesy after the fact. When it was when it happened, when the movie came out, we didn't think it was cheesy. Yeah, that's it was, true. It was badass. It was like badass. it was like. Dude, Roadhouse is badass. But now we can look back on it and think like, oh, that was ridiculous. We got, you know, Patrick Swayze out there, the guy, the same guy that says, she's like the wind, <laughs> out there doing Tai Chi and ripping dudes' throats out. Like, we get it. But, like, at the time, it was badass, you know? Like, it was. So when they used some of the same lines in there, I was like, oh, I can't believe they used that line, you know? Like, nobody ever wins a fight you know it was like as he's getting patched up by the doctor i was like shut up i can't believe you used that i was like no that lived in the other movie you're supposed to write something different um this one i think i think you're right i think you have to you have to go in it knowing that it's it with it's going to be cheesy it's going to be lighthearted. just shut the brain off and let have fun and just be better than me and make it to when Connor actually gets there. Well, you know? I saw people like like uh, I saw people like the the Connor meme or whatever. Where he, like walks in <laughs> like swollen but up and ter- but like, how he walks all the time. Well, I was gonna say like you gotta think he was having some fun with that, right? Or like, they're like I, Connor, just walk in like you normally do. Or the like, or, <laughs> I imagine in my head they're like they try to give him stage directions. Connor, a little less shoulders, a little less shoulders, and then watch him <laughs> still have his shoulders. This is less shoulders. He's like, bro, I'm so jacked now. The shoulders just, don't go anywhere else, bro. They just stay right here, man. Have you not seen what I've been putting on up there? Throwing up the like, weight. You see these lats, dog? I can't even touch my sides with my arms. He's my like, arms have to stay out like this. He's like, bro, I'm on that cold coffee program, dog. You know what I'm saying? I'm with the, I'm with the, Nothing but shoulders, dog. We just doing, what are we working out today? Shoulders. Shoulders and lats. Can we do legs? No, 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 no. Shoulder no. day. Lats. Shoulder day. <laughs> What's tomorrow? Lats. Lats. Well, today I had shoulders again. <laughs> yeah. And then maybe some neck stuff. <laughs> well, I haven't checked it out yet, but I'm going to see. I, got, I, 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 can't I will watch, get through it eventually. I can't watch tonight because i got to actually sleep on the plane or I'm going to be like. That's what, if you have an iPad, you should download it for the plane. I do have an iPad, but I'm, i got, I got to sleep tonight because I got tomorrow. Tomorrow I got That's true. Well, some, it, maybe it'll put you to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's the perfect film to put on the background while you sleep. Maybe I'll I'll find it. I'm, I'm gonna watch it. But I would think if you're stuck in the airport, if you're stuck on a flight, that might be a fun one to have on there, sir. That's when I go to the Admirals Club and yeah. Well, on your flight back, maybe. I think I need to sleep then too. Yeah, I got the early flight out. Five. I will. I will. I will watch it. I mean, people. You know, the people that I think have went into that movie with the right mentality and like not expecting Oscar award have all enjoyed it. In fact, they've all exactly. said like they've watched it like two times. Like it's fun. I'm sure it's fun. Which kills me. I'm like, fuck. I haven't got through it once, and they're like, bro, I watched it like two times. I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta give it another try. Yeah, yeah. I, I will mean, I'm get sure through Connor's it. I will get through it. Connor's just like being himself. You yeah. know what I mean? But like that's why they brought him in there. Yeah. I mean, he obviously he did what he did, but honestly. It, it's not just him. I, I couldn't – like some of the other guys I was watching, I was like, this is bad. Jake, I thought was – Jake was awesome. Jake's a good actor. But like some of the other guys, I was just like, oh, if I'm already getting shit at these guys and they're supposed to be actors, I was like, what am I going to think when I see Connor on there? But honestly, I, I think he's just going to be – I just got to go in it knowing that it's going to be silly. It's going to be lighthearted and uh, just enjoy it. You know, I don't think I'm going to watch it twice. I, I will get through it once. Well, technically you've already watched it once. That's true. I get, well, you now you're. You won't make it all the way through twice. Yeah. But you've watched it twice. So. 
All right. Well, anyway, I'm going to check it out, too. I still need to check it out. I'm anxious to hear what people think about it. And I think, if, again, if you go in with the right attitude, I think you have fun. I know it would help. What's that? If we uh, did like Josh Hernandez and drank a bunch more Bush Light, Ooh. which we, we to to our credit, I guess we, we didn't want to put it on him that that was his favorite beer. But, in fact, Josh reached back out. And for those of you that are on the Patreon channel, you know, we have lots of fun areas where you can comment and do stuff. And he, he, he commented on the last one. He said, to be fair. My favorite beer for quantity, which I love that he oh, said for quantity. For quantity. That's where we're That's like, a he's road a road show. show That's a road right show there. listing. He says, my favorite beer for quantity is Bush Light. I do like this part. And my favorite beer is free beer. True, true, Well true. done, sir. And he said, but I love a good Heineken. I'm like, Heine-, which for me, I was like, that's a, that's a – it's a big jump a from the bush choice, light yeah. to the Heineken. I do like the Heineken. Heineken at times, it's got like that skunky smell. I think it's Heineken in the United States. Heineken Maybe. in Europe, if you can get over there, like yeah. it's good, it's fresh. I don't. I, I, surely, I'm sure they produce it here too. But I, I agree with you. Yeah. I feel like a lot of times I try Josh, Heineken it, and I'm like, are you a, are you a Heineken snob? Are you a European Heineken lover? Or is it an American? He's Heineken? like, I get it all shipped directly He's from, like, <laughs> <laughs> from wherever they make it, wherever that place is, wherever that place Heineken land. Oh, that's but great. Uh, but yeah, I. I because uh, first we were like, let's not put that on him. We don't want to put that on. But you know, it's funny as we talked about it today, we were like, dude, it was pretty good. <laughs> it was not like bad if, at if all. We, if we had a twelve back in front of us right now, we'd we'd drink it. I'm telling you, I enjoyed it last week. It was it was it was crisp. I was but a it was little easy, worried. It was easy drinking. Easy, easy, easy drinking. Well, I think it was you know because I think a lot of times when you drink some of the cheap beers. Like I wonder how Nat Light. I know if I drink a Rolling Rock right now, I'd still think it tastes like piss. That I'm pretty hundred. <laughs> I'm pretty hundred percent sure. But I think it's with some of the cheap beers. It's the malt liquor ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you don't know which ones are like malt liquor, and you drink it. Like if somebody's like, my favorite beer is Court Forty Five. I know what I'm gonna get if we're drinking yeah, Court Forty Five. Yeah. Or if somebody's like Old English. Have you ever heard this Old English brand? It's Little really, Oli. really good. They love it in England. It's Old English. <laughs> that shit is <laughs> so Terrible. bad. So bad, but yeah, no. the The bush light was actually it was it was fine. It was good. We drink, we drink it all. We drank it all. <laughs> I think I had more than you did, but you did. But I was I was trying to get trying to work out you had after. To get swole. Oscar was here. I didn't want to look bad and like, hey, let's go work out after I drink these beers. <laughs> <laughs> that like, never does well. That never works. That's out. why I just drank the beers. <laughs> I didn't want to do that didn't either. Want to, <laughs> we did try to get you in there. It's funny there was we did leg day the other day, and, or we were gonna do leg day. I was like, I'm get Morgan over. We're gonna do leg days. No, I mean if I you're gonna be wearing to shorts, be. man, we gotta show off them legs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm definitely gonna be wearing shorts. <laughs> yeah. All right, listen, I gotta go pack. I haven't even packed my bag yet. I've been so busy. I, gotta, I mean, I'll, I'm gonna you gotta go, go pack I'm, your shorts. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I know grappling. I don't even have to put a suit on, dude. We don't yeah. even wear suits for the grappling. That's awesome. I love that. Uh, yeah, so I love that. <laughs> it won't take me long to pack. Yeah, that's for right. sure. I don't have to wear a suit, so that's awesome. I gotta go do that. Uh, so anyway, yeah, you mentioned the Patreon.com. Appreciate everybody that supports us over there. If you want to appreciate it, patreoncom slash the MMA Roadshow. That would help us out a lot. For as little as three dollars a month, you will have a uh, support of us and access to the and a half episodes, which uh, we'll certainly be doing one of those after the UFC Fight Night 240 this weekend. Maybe we'll talk a little PFL as well. Talk a little for your professional grappling and that experience. We'll have a lot to talk about. Uh, but if you can't do that, if you can just take a second to rate us, review us, we appreciate that. But uh, if you can't do any of that even, <laughs> know that we still like you. Yeah, we do. We appreciate you. Thanks for listening. <laughs>